Hey folks, Eric the Old Jarhead here. So I'm milling up some one by random width pine boards for this customer. And I've been asked a couple times about the cost of fuel, the increase in fuel prices, and how it impacts the portable sawmill business, how it is going to impact the business. And I'll be honest with you, I had to think about it a little bit, I had to do a little research myself, because honestly, I haven't seen a major difference in business right now. There's uh, definitely a high demand for mobile Sawyers, for sure. The first thing I did was I looked at fuel prices, and fuel prices are up, oh gosh, they're up about a dollar a gallon in the last month or so, which is astronomical. That's absolutely insane. I'm seeing diesel prices at over six dollars a gallon out here in Washington State now. That's incredible. That's unbelievable. I'll be honest, you know, six dollars a gallon makes me ponder a little bit and think about whether or not you know that's going to impact today i look at this price at six dollars a gallon 609 something like that i've seen 599 to 609 for diesel and honestly that's pretty scary because at six dollars a gallon you know if i got to drive 180 miles and i've got the camper and i'm pulling the sawmill and if i keep my mileage down and i and i watch things pretty closely i can get about 10 miles to the gallon right so 180 miles i'm looking at 18 gallons there and 18 gallons back and if i'm charging a buck a mile both ways you know then i'm going to get about 360 dollars in my mileage and what's left is going to be in the 140 dollar range after i pay for fuel now that might seem okay to some you know hey yeah, you got 140 dollars left over but the reality is that when you drive as much as someone like i do for business you got to do oil changes more often you've got maintenance to do you got to replace tires and things so even if you assume that we'll only take say 10% out for maintenance and oil costs and that kind of thing, you know, at $144 or whatever it was left over after fuel takes me down to about 130. Um, it seems like a great profit, right? It cost me $216 in fuel or something like that. And I got all that money profit, $130. Yeah, but here's the thing. 180 miles is gonna take me about three hours to drive and about three hours back, that's six hours and i'm looking at two to three even four hours of setup and tear down time before i you know i mean i've got to i've got to get the camper on the truck it doesn't live there permanently it's only there when it's needed um i've got to hack everything get everything packed up get the mill ready get all the tools ready and that could take i would say on average about three hours of uh, packing and getting everything ready to go and and uh you know just checking everything over and packing the mill and all the kind of stuff that needs to be done before you roll and when you get home you got about three hours to do to get everything put away and reorganized so if you think about it from that perspective i've probably got somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 hours involved to prepare and get ready and drive and then after the job is done, drive and then put everything away and clean everything and get everything done. So if I'm making 130 bucks for 12 hours worth of work, <laughs> you know, my driving out there, I'm getting about 10 bucks an hour, a little bit more maybe. So you're not, that's not a great big profit. You're, you're really, honestly, at a dollar a, a mile, the customer is getting a great deal because they're really not paying much for you to drive out there and to get everything ready to go and, and to show up on site at their remote location. Now granted, I also charge a setup and delivery fee, which is separate of my mileage. And, and that's because once you arrive on site, even if you arrive at the flattest, most perfect, huge area, that you'll have no problem, you just drive right up to the logs, unhitch the mill, pull the, the camper 10 feet forward, stop and set up, you're still looking at at least 30 minutes or more to get the mill set up and ready to go for the job. And then you're going to have at least 30 minutes to tear down and get everything cleaned up and leave. And I will tell you, it's usually longer, the tear down part. A lot of, of blowing sawdust off and cleaning things and whatnot. And then throughout the whole day, there's going to be times where you're going to be lubing things and whatnot that the, the customer doesn't pay extra for, right? I mean, you know, if you're charging like I do $100 for setup and delivery, that's gonna cover everything that you do when you're not milling. So it's, a, again, it's a pretty good deal. Ultimately, the, the delivery of the sawmill and the removal of the sawmill and the setup isn't what pays the Sawyer. It pays a little bit, just enough to, to get by maybe, if that. Um, it doesn't even pay minimum wage, frankly. 
Um, and that's okay. That's not why we do this. But I, I'm just kind of looking at it from the, the price of fuel perspective. How is it going to impact business? So let's talk about that. So first of all, yes, we charge mileage. Yes, we charge setup and delivery fee. Is it excessive? I think I just demonstrated it really isn't because you got to pay somebody to show up, set up the mill, do all those things, tear the mill down, and then take the mill out of there and, and head back to their place of residence or business or whatever. That's going to cost you some money. So how are fuel prices impacting business itself? Well, I would tell you that I don't actually see any major impact to my business. Here's why. The impact is really to the customer. The customer has choices. All customers do. That's the beautiful thing about a free market system. You have a choice. You've got If you've got logs, you can buck them up for firewood or, or campfire wood or whatever it is you want or you might be able to turn them into something. And in this case here, this customer had a bunch of logs, some from his own property, some from others that people were just gonna turn into firewood. And so he lucked out and he got a bunch of logs and he needed about a thousand board feet of one by flooring for his shop. They didn't really need hardwood. Softwood is good for uh, um, cabin flooring or shop flooring or something like that. There's nothing wrong with using it. Yeah, it'll dent a little easier. It'll wear a little easier, but, but that's okay. You know, you mill one by stuff, um, ponderosa pine barely shrinks it all in drying you know they say a sixteenth of an inch i'd be surprised sometimes if you get that much it might be a thirty second of an inch and then you plane her down and you get her down to say three quarters of an inch and you're going to have a pretty good floor especially since it's probably sitting on some osb or plywood or something like that you know the under the underlay so i decided to look at the cost of buying one by eights or one by sixes at the big box stores and what I found was that one by eight eight commons were three dollars a board foot, and one by eight eight specials or select were six dollars a board foot. You heard me right, six dollars a board foot. That, folks, is why the cost of fuel isn't really impacting the portable Sawyer just yet. I think not in the sense that we go to you because you have lawns. Because even if the cost of bringing me out to you costs you a dollar a board foot for delivered lumber, which I can tell you that usually it's not. Without good help, it might be 70 cents a board foot. I mean, that's really high for a portable Sawyer. But I've, I've had that happen where I'm mostly milling alone or I'm milling alone with a little bit of help. And that can run in the 65 cents or so board foot range, you know, 60, 65, that can happen. But if I've got really good help and everything's really cranking right along, it's down around 40 cents a board foot. But let's say I'm milling around a dollar a board foot. You know, maybe all the costs add up and it's a buck a board foot. Well, a thousand board feet of common one buys at a big box store is gonna cost you over $3,000. If I'm milling at a buck a board foot, it's gonna cost you a thousand. Now, yes, that stuff's kiln dried, but you don't need kiln dried. You can air dry especially out here you can air dry i've air dried pine down to between six and seven percent about six and a half seven percent which is perfect out here at the cabin i consistently air dry down under eight percent so you can air dry down low enough um i've never had a problem with powder post beetles i have seen powder post beetle problem in really wet climates like portland for example my sister had some it can happen but in general i don't really see that as an issue you do have to plane it yourself, so if you're not going to use it roughs on, there's work involved for the customer to get it, you know, at 40, 50 cents a board foot. There's some work involved. You got to stack and sticker it. You got to provide your own stickers. Uh, once it's dry, you know, say eight to 12 weeks down the road, now you're going to have to plane it. And then if you want it tongue and groove or something like that, you're going to have to turn it into tongue and groove. So there's work involved. But the savings is going to be pretty phenomenal. If you can get a thousand board feet for around $500 and you put another $500 in, in terms of getting a planer and maybe some help and buying some stickers and buying a router and buying uh, tongue and groove bits and all that kind of stuff. Even if it costs you that much, which it's never cost me that much, so I don't see that happening. Even at that rate, when you're at $1,000 a board foot, so you got $1,000 invested in 1,000 board feet of flooring, <laughs> you're still saving $2,000. So you might be paying the Portable Sawyer buck a mile both ways, and 100 bucks setup fee, and 100 bucks an hour, and that seems crazy to me today, because a dozen years later, I'm looking at that thinking, wow, that's, that's a lot. But in reality, and unfortunately, inflation today and the cost of fuel 
has really hit pretty hard. And if you look at the impact at the big box stores, even though I always say I don't compete with the big box stores, that's not, that's not my gig, that's not my thing. I'm not competing with them. They're not competing with me. We're a different market. However, customers got logs. They can save a ton of money by getting that old jarhead to come out and mill those logs into lumber for them. What I'm seeing is big cost savings to have the mobile sawyer come to your location. So let's save money and let's bring the old jarhead out and mill those logs out. That, folks, is how I think things are today. Thanks for watching. As always, folks, appreciate every one of you. The old jarhead out.